All right, for the main purpose for this example is to is to work through the situation where we have two transmission lines cascaded in series and with some resistors in between and make sure that all of you have had some exposure for how to do that calculation in both directions. So specifically how you update the transmission coefficient to take into account the resistors that are in the middle. So we have our voltage source, we have our first transmission line, and then there's going to be an R1, a series resistor, and a shunt resistor before we enter the second transmission line, which has a characteristic impedance of Z02. And then on the other end, we have our load. So in this case, uh, let's throw out some basic numbers. So Vg is going to be equal to 20 volts. The source impedance is 50 ohms. The first transmission line is also 50 ohms. The second transmission line is 50 ohms. And R1 equals R2, also 50 ohms. But RL, in a twist of fate, is 150 ohms. Also, let's label our voltages. So this, this is what we'll define as the load voltage. I'll call this voltage here the VJ2. So the voltage at the second, the junction entering the second line and this one be VJ1. So the voltage at the, out, at the output of the first transmission line. So let's, let's start by uh, making sure we, we know where we're going at the very end. So the, the main, what I want this problem to, what you want to be able to do at the end of this problem is to be able to calculate all the necessary parameters and, and draw out the bounce diagram. So in this case, let's, let's just start with the bounce diagram so that, so that in the end, what we have to do is just calculate all the parameters in the bounce diagram. So first of all, Let's label, we have these two segments of transmission lines. Uh, we have our reflection off the generator side, reflection off the load side, and then over here we have the reflection between the first transmission line and the generator, the reflection between the second transmission line and the generator, and then we also have the transmission going from one to two as well as a transmission going from two to one. So these are all the, so this, once we have these numbers, we just need to calculate our V in and then just multiply our way through. Uh, oh, I guess this kind of was somewhat assumed, but let's just assume they're equal length. Otherwise this will get gnarly really, really quickly. So we start out with our incoming wave V in, going in, and then once it hits this first junction, part of it is going to transmit and part of it's going to reflect. And then once it, this hits the generator, part of that's going to reflect. Uh, once this hits the load, that's going to reflect. And then this next wave here is going to be a combination of the reflection off this wave and the transmission off that wave. And similarly, uh, the other thing is that the next wave that ends up going across the second transmission line is also a combination of this reflected wave and that transmitted wave. So let's just start by seeing how these parameters are going to get multiplied through. So we'll just kind of come up with a symbolic answer. So this first part is going to be the input voltage times the transmission from one to two. The reflection is going to be V in gamma one J. Then when you bounce off the generator, you're gonna have V in gamma one J gamma G. 
And over here, this bounces off the load, so you'll have V in tau one two gamma L. And then once you go here, this, you have the reflection from this interface plus the transmission from that. So this one will actually be the sum of two terms. The first one is V in gamma G gamma one J squared, because there's this extra reflection plus the transmission from this, which is V in tau one two gamma L and then there's this tau two one that we add at the end. Similarly, this wave over here is going to be a combination of the reflection off of this interface, this junction. So V in uh, tau one two gamma L gamma two J and then plus the transmission of this across the junction. So V in gamma one J gamma G, so this term here, times a tau going from one to two. So times that number. So as you can see, as you bounce back and forth, if these are the same length, it just kind of propagates downward like this. And you have to make sure to keep track of all of the reflections that go in. But the bottom line is if you know the voltage going in and you have these one, two, three, four, five, six numbers over here, you, you're all set to calculate what the answer is. Let's start out by finding the, the easy stuff that we've gotten some practice with doing. The voltage going in is going to be VG times the, the impedance drop across the, the split between Z01 and ZG. So that would be Z01, ZG plus Z01 which is going to be 20, 50 over 50 plus 50, which is going to be equal to 10 volts going in. Next up, the reflections on the generator side, gamma G is going to be a Z01 and ZG are both 50 ohms. And so you have a perfect match. So gamma G is just going to be zero, which is nice. And then let's just also take a look at this load side gamma L, our L is 150, and then Z02 is 50 ohms. So the reflection at the load side is 50 minus 150 over 50 plus, 150 plus 50, which is going to be equal to 1 half. So now we have this number and this number, and we have the voltage going in. All right, now let's look at the slightly hairier stuff. Let's start out by looking at this V junction and more specifically the, the wave that's coming out of the first transmission line. So we start by uh, looking at the reflection coefficient. So what we want to do is we want to model this output as just a single, single resistor Z1J that represents everything that you see when you first come out. So what do you see when you first come out? We're gonna see this R1 and then R2 in parallel with Z02. Therefore, if you do this comparison, you can see that Z1J is going to be R1 plus R2 and Z02 in parallel. So R2, Z02, divided by R2 plus Z02. So if you plug in these numbers, you'll have R1 is 50 ohms. And then since R2 and Z02 are both 50 ohms, the two in parallel will be 25 ohms. So Z1J is going to be 75 ohms. So once you have this equivalent resistance impedance, the calculation of the reflection coefficient is just our, our tried and true formula. So gamma 1j is going to be equal to new, which is z1j minus old, which is z01, over new plus old, which is going to be 75 minus 25 over 75 plus 50, which is going to be 
1 fifth. And so that gives us this value. And now the next thing is how do we calculate the tr effective transmission from 1 to 2? So this would take into account the impedance mismatch between Z01, Z02, but also the effect of these, these resistors over here. Rephrase a different way, what we want to do is we want to relate this voltage here, which we'll call Vj1, to this voltage here, Vj2. So this, uh, this effective transmission tau from 1 to 2 is how we relate this voltage if we know that voltage over here. So by looking at the, the voltage divider over here, we can write that Vj2 is going to be equal to R2 parallel Z02 over R2 parallel Z02 plus R1. So the voltage divider between these two in parallel with that one. And that's going to be equal to 25 over 25 plus 50, which is going to be equal to, I'm sorry, this should be one Vj1. So one third Vj1. Now let's use this relationship to find this equivalent tau one two. So remember what we want with tau one two, one going to two, is to be able to find out what Vj2 is if what we were given was this incoming wave going here, V plus. So if we look at that, uh, let's start by substituting in this, this quantity here. So Vj2 is going to be one third Vj1 divided by V plus. And what's this Vj1? So let's let me fix that subscript. So what's this Vj1 over here? This Vj1 is the positive going wave uh, times a transmission coefficient, right? So, so now we're gonna replace Vj1 with one plus gamma one J V plus all over V plus. So these cancel, and now we have it being equal to one third one plus gamma one j, which is equal to one third over one plus one fifth, which is equal to six over 15. So that, that gives us this value. And so that's, uh, that's five down, two to go. Before we can before we can call it a day. So the remaining things that we have to look into are how to deal with the reflected wave that's trying to go from two back to one. So let's start by looking at what the equivalent circuit looks like as you're going to the left. So you're going to start out with your Vj2, and again, that's just as a head, we'll bring this up later, but that's going to be equal to one plus the reflection coefficient bouncing off of here, right? So this is going to be Vj2, there is going to be an R2 over here, and then an R1, and then there's gonna be a voltage drop of Z01 going down here. And then this over here is our Vj1 that we want to transfer to. So one of the things that we wanted to do first over here was we tried to calculate a reflection coefficient. So we do the same thing like what we did over here. So the equivalent circuit at the output, if we just want, I'll call Z2j, I'll just write it bigger too here. So Z2j, which is like the, 
the equivalent impedance when you're coming out of transmission line 2 heading to transmission line 1. Uh, that is going to be equal to, you want to lump all of these together. So C2J is going to be equal to R2 in parallel with these two added together. So R2 in parallel with R1 plus Z01. And uh, if we go through the math for that, that's going to be R2 times R1 plus Z01 over the sum of these two, so R2 plus R1 plus Z01, which is going to come out to be uh, 50 times 50 plus 50, all over 50 plus 50 plus 50, which is going to come out to be 100 over 3. So now this is the value that we use. Let's take a look back over here. What we did next was we calculated the reflection coefficient. So gamma 2j is going to be nu minus old. So z2j minus z02, so coming out here, all over z2j plus z02, which is where z2j is equal to 100 over 3. So be believe it or not, if you, if you uh, do this calculation, it actually ends up being a, a nice number, minus one-fifth. And so that gives us this value over here. So now following the similar process to what we had before over here, when we were trying to write VJ2 in terms of VJ1, now we're trying to write uh, VJ1 in terms of VJ2. So VJ1, if you look at this, it's going to be the voltage divider between R1 and Z01. So it's going to be Z01 over Z01 plus R1 times VJ2. Let me just pretty that up a little bit. Times VJ2. So knowing that relationship, we should remember that our process is we start by, we want to find tau going from 2 to 1, which relates VJ1 to the negative going wave that's coming back this way in transmission line two. So let's start by substituting this in. So that's going to give us Z01 over Z01 plus R1 VJ2 over V2 minus. And remember VJ2 is going to be equal to uh, the transmission one plus gamma of going that way, right? So Z01 over Z01 plus R1. And then this is going to be 1 plus gamma 2J, which is what we found here, uh, times V2 minus, all over V2 minus. So these cancel out. And this is the final answer that we're going for. So if you plug in those numbers, you're going to get 50 over 50 plus 50, and then 1, and then gamma 2j is negative 1 fifth, so 1 minus 1 fifth. So you're going to find that tau 2, 1 is going to be equal to 2 fifths. And so that gives us this number. So now we have Vn, gamma g, the two reflections and two transmissions that describe this junction, and then gamma l. And, uh, and then you can just reflection diagram your way across. So it's a bit of a mess. But in the end, the, the math and the circuit analysis is, is pretty doable. The main challenge is to just make sure that you're methodical, that you, you know, I think the helpful way to approach it is to just list out the basics of all the parameters you need and make sure to maybe just do this symbolically so that you know what you're calculating and what, what once you find these individual values. And then go in and just like a checklist, just start calculating out through each of these individual values.